Hello lovely people and welcome to my channel and day 10 of Inktober where the word of the day is gigantic. So today I'm going to share with you the process that I went through to draw this gigantic elephant and before I start I just wanted to mention that I haven't done a video for every day of Inktober but I have got the pictures that I've drawn so far on my Instagram so if you look up art cadets on Instagram you should be able to find the other pictures that I've drawn. So back to today's picture then, so my idea obviously was to draw an elephant and I thought that was a fairly obvious thing to draw for the word gigantic and that was all fine and I began by looking out a reference photo because um, that's always helpful if you're drawing something like this and I managed to find a good reference photo and I started off by just doing a faint pencil outline on my paper. So before um, I went and did any details, I just did with a fairly light grey wash an underpainting. So that's like the basic just grey all over and went in with a fairly fat brush and did some shading just to show the darker areas. I then went in and used a finer brush to do a few more details and used a slightly darker shade of the black ink. And from then on was where it became a challenge because to be honest I didn't even really know where to start and I think the tip that I've learnt from today's painting was to take a step back because when I first started doing the details of the wrinkles on the elephant and by jingo there are some wrinkles on the elephant and then I got a bit bogged down with where they should go and looking at my reference photo and trying to match up each and every wrinkle with the reference photo well that was never going to work for me um, not in the time that I had to do this picture anyway so what I did was I took a step back and looked at roughly where the lines were so not trying to replicate exactly from my reference picture just trying to look at shapes within certain areas so rather than looking at a really close-up detailed um, reference photo I just looked at sort of areas so took each part of the elephant um, a piece at a time so looking at maybe the ear or the eye and kind of worked out from there rather than looking at it and thinking I can't do this you just take little bits at a time and try not to replicate exactly your reference photo when you're drawing an elephant at least because otherwise it's going to just get you down and take you forever. So once I'd done this I got a bit more confidence and I thought okay let's do this and I kind of mixed it up a bit so I did some fine lines um, with my small round paintbrush and then used um, clean water often to dilute it a little bit and blur those lines so it wasn't too um, two sharp lines it was kind of yeah blended really and I also used the dip pen that I got as well and that helped to get a really fine line as well but as I said last week with the fox picture um, you have to be careful with that one not to press too hard so as to tear your paper I am using quite a thick watercolor paper um, I think it's 300 grams is that right I'll put it in the description box anyway um, but it stands up to her being wet and um, having several layers of ink put down on it so I think once I'd got um, the trunk done um, I felt a little bit more comfortable as to where I was going and definitely looking at it at just a small bit at a time helped rather than just looking at the whole massive elephant but it was still a real challenge because um, 
the lines all, or the wrinkles rather, they all go in different directions and um, I think generally if you can draw sort of curved lines then they're a bit more realistic than just drawing straight lines. It's quite difficult to explain but um, yeah I mean looking at elephant skin it is really rough and I think it's not organized or in a set pattern at all other than the sort of lines down or horizontal lines along the nose but I did find it really a challenge and I think with ink as well it made it a little bit more difficult because you can't blend so well you haven't got as long say if you were doing it with watercolor you'd have a little bit more time or certainly if you were doing it with pencil or pastel as I'm a bit more used to then you've got a little bit more time to do your blending and and so on but with ink it dries so quickly that um, there's no sort of changing your mind once the ink is on the paper So as I went through the painting then, I did get a little bit more confident with drawing um, my own kind of version of where the lines would be. And once you've got um, a little bit down and you've got the general idea of, of how the wrinkles are, then you just plod along with it. And the good thing about inks is that you can add sort of a layer of shading over the top of lines that you've done and they won't move so as much as that can be a disadvantage it can be an advantage as well so you can sort of go over an area after you've already done the, the detailed lines and just do a wash of shading if you want to and I did that um, several times in this painting because the more the, uh, lines that I did the um, the more I felt that I needed a bit more shading so I started off quite nervously I think and did things fairly lightly which isn't a bad idea um, to build up slowly but I think as I went through the painting and this did take me about three hours actually so it's quite a long time um, I got a bit bolder with the, the um, darkness of the lines and where I was putting them it just took me a while to get going <laughs> But actually, I think um, it was a challenge. But I think the finished finish piece, I am kind of pleased with it. There's always things that I would do differently. And I personally have a bit of a problem with calling something finished and putting my paintbrush down and saying, right, it's done. Because I always think there's something else that I could do. Which I suppose Inktober is good for because you've got the time constraints of doing a different piece every day. And I have really enjoyed it actually and I think it's been a good learning um, curve for me. And certainly working with ink because I haven't done that before. So I don't know what experiences anyone else has had with ink and perhaps you've got some hints and tips that you might be able to share with everybody so by all means put those in the comments box below because I never really thought this was going to be like a super photo realistic piece um, because of the line details and I think if I was doing a realistic or a photo realistic picture I would do softer lines and I would probably use pencil or pastel but I think this is good for me because I need to be able to loosen up with my drawings and paintings and um, and that's really helped me do that it kind of forced me to take a step back and and not worry too much over the details because you just can't with an elephant it's just too much detail and certainly not copying it from a reference photo in the time scale that I had so yeah, it's a good exercise. 
but next time I'm going to do a whale. No, not really. <laughs> now I did enjoy it and I think it's, um, I was quite pleased with the result at the end. But it certainly took a lot longer than I thought it would. So anyway, I have got a fun fact about elephants because I thought it would be fun to share this with you. So, elephants can live until they are between 50 and 70 years old, which I didn't realise. And also, the trunk that I'm drawing here has apparently got 40,000 muscles in it, which is quite amazing, and it's super dexterous and can even pick up a grain of rice. I didn't know that either. So that's quite impressive. So one last thing to say about this piece, after my burbling on about elephant facts, is that um, I did want to add a splash of colour to this, and I am denied about which colour to add um, for a little while because I didn't want it to be like a massive splash of red or anything like that, I wanted it to be fairly subtle. And so I had a little play around on the side, as you can see, I decided to do, um, I think it was a mixture of red and brown. So it almost gave like a sort of a pinky peachy effect. And I put that on the tusk and the paler parts of the ears as well. And I quite like how this turned out. More luck than anything else, but um, yeah, I thought it made, gave it a bit more um, dimension and adding the whiskers at the end was fun too. So anyway, that's the end of the painting. I hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry if I've waffled on too much, but hopefully you'll like, comment and subscribe to my channel and join me next week where I will have another Inktober challenge. And I'll see you then.